is recording. Hello, welcome back. We are on day three and four of studying for the July 2023 bar exam. Today we are going over remedies. I've divided it into tort remedies and contract remedies, and this is going to be a quick overview of the main topics um, and keywords that you would use on an essay. So the first key word to, to memorize is compensatory, nominal, punitive, restitutionary, Constructive trust, a little louder if you're just chewing, equitable lien, TRO for a temporary restraining order. Preliminary injunction. Under contract, these are the terms you want to memorize for torts. And under contracts, we have compensatory, which falls under expectation, incidental, consequential, Can you still see that? We have restitution. Specific performance. Decision Reformation Waiver Equitable Estoppel Is it still afraid? Yeah, let me try turn my phone on and see if you guys are afraid. Nope. Okay, so going over these quickly, these are the words that you want to. We can also add on, we'll add on the defenses unclean hands and i never remember how to pronounce that i think it's latches or latches latches okay now these are the terms that you want to have memorized for this topic and now we will go over the definitions starting with compensatory damages compensatory damages is to compensate the plaintiff for the harm done and to put the person 
in the position had the tort or breach not occurred. Some things that um, are important about this is that damages cannot be speculative. And the plaintiff must mitigate the damages. So the tort is committed, we found that the defendant has committed the tort, what kind of remedies can the plaintiff seek against the defendant? They can seek compensatory damages if they are not speculative and if they mitigate the damages. Nominal damages are When the plaintiff did not, there is no actual injury and intentional. Typically, it's an intentional tort was committed. So your intentional torts, your assault, battery committed, then the plaintiff can seek compensatory and nominal damages. Punitive damages are additional damages uh, to punish the defendant. They are never for negligence claims. Why? Because we're not going to punish you just for acting negligently. Restitution, the goal of restitutionary damages is to avoid unjust enrichment of the defendant. This means the plaintiff recovers the value of the benefit conferred on the defendant. An example of this is in your trust. If the trustee mismanages the accounts, the trust fund, by taking $40,000 and investing that $40,000 and maybe earning a profit, let's say going away with $100,000, the beneficiaries can seek restitutionary damages against that trustee for the entire $100,000. Why? Because the court wants to prevent unjust enrichment. Oops, enrichment. Okay, so restitutionary, compensatory, nominal, punitive, restitutionary. Replevin is when the plaintiff seeks to recover the specific personal property. Think, um, would you say conversion? Because technically conversion is like, conversion is like the destruction, the full destruction of it. What would you say is a good example of replevin? Like, I want it back, give it back. What does replevin mean? No, it's just, I'm, what's a good example of somebody took something from you in torts? Trespassing? I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking theft. I just can't think of a tortious uh, thing for theft. All right, so these are our first set of remedies. I want it back. Give item back. Then we have our equitable remedies. Trespass to chattel. That's exactly what I was, trespass to chattel, okay. You would seek a replevin. And again, our punitive damages and our nominal damages, you're probably, you're not going to get punitive for negligence claims and you're not going to probably get nominal damages either. So if this is an intentional tort, we could seek a repellent. I want it back. 
We could seek compensatory damages or we could seek restitutionary damages. Okay, toward equitable remedies, constructive trust. The court will order the defendant to serve as trustee and return property to the plaintiff if the defendant improperly acquired title to property using the plaintiff's fund and retention would result in unjust enrichment. A constructive trust is created by the court for the sole purpose of um, giving the, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to, to say this, for the sole purpose of giving to the beneficiary, returning to the beneficiary, give, giving, yeah. Equitable lien. If a defendant improperly has title to property, the court may order a sale with proceeds going to the plaintiff. This is the appropriate remedy rather than a constructive trust if the plaintiff cannot trace his property to the defendant's property. So again, seeking constructive trust, these are all equitable remedies. TRO and a preliminary injunction. <clears throat> what is a TRO? It's issued for before a preliminary injunction. It is an emergency order imposed to maintain the status quo until a hearing for a preliminary injunction can be held. The moving party must show he will suffer an irreparable need need form irreparable harm. Sorry, yeah, harm or injury, under you. And a likelihood of prevailing. on the merits. A TRO lasts a limited amount of time, 14 days. Then our preliminary injunction, so our temporary, temporary for 14 days. Our preliminary injunction is before a full trial on the merits takes place, there needs to be four factors considered, and that is harm, harm to the party seeking the injunction if not granted, two, the risk of injunct, the risk that the party seeking the injunction would be harmed more by the absence of an injunction than the opposing party would be by granting injunctive relief. So evaluate, well, balance the risk, I guess. The likelihood of prevailing on the merits and the public interest. Mm. 
note, a plaintiff may also seek a permanent injunction after a full trial. The court will examine whether enforcement is feasible and balance the equities. Okay, so preliminary injunction is similar to a TRO. It happens pre-trial. Uh, both have the same number one, and that is the irreparable harm or injury if it's not granted. Two weighs the balances between the party seeking the injunction and the um, the opposing and the harm to the opposing party. Um, let me say that again. The ways balances between the party, the risk of harm to the party seeking the injunction versus the risk of harm or damages to the party opposing the injunction. Three, same as TRO, and that's the likelihood of prevailing on the merits. Uh, four, the additional is public interest. So public interest is different and the balancing um, parties. And this is your list of tort remedies. Now we're going to move on to contract legal remedies. So we have two parties, uh, plaintiff and defendant. Defendant breached the contract. What uh, damages can the plaintiff seek? First one is compensatory damages. A party will recover the loss of value of the breaching party's performance plus incidentals plus consequentials minus any expenses saved as a result of the breach. This is a little bit more of a math equation here, so I'm going to bring this board over. So <clears throat> compensatory damages are putting us in the position had the breach not occurred. Okay. Had had the contract been fulfilled and breach not occurred. Oops, not occurred. And what they determine that is is the expectation. What did the party expect to achieve from the contract? Expectation, which they say is the loss, loss of value plus incidental and incidental damages are relating to avoiding loss, trying to find replacement service. So um, let's say you were hiring somebody and they failed. Um, you were going to hire them for 20k a year. They couldn't make it. You had to spend another 2,000 getting recruiting service. And you hired someone for 25,000. So your loss in value would be the 5k plus the 2k that it cost you to get the recruiting service. And then plus consequential damages. Minus any expenses saved as a result of the breach. Saved expenses. Let's say you don't have to buy them. Maybe there was a, another bonus or something. Lab, they wanted a laptop or something. So maybe you're saving $1,000 by hiring this second person, second employee. Uh, 
let's go back consequential damages consequential damages that a reasonable party would have foreseen at the time of entry into the contract it typically has to be times of the essence or uh, they would notify them hey uh, we're hiring you for twenty thousand uh, because we'll get this hiring bonus of five hundred dollars they have to make that known to this person, the twenty, the person who they're in contract with, and then they could see five hundred dollars consequential, it's foreseeable. By not taking this job, you knew they were going to lose out on a five hundred dollar hiring bonus. So five hundred dollars. So what do we have? Seven, seven five hundred minus a thousand. Sixty five hundred dollars for this breach. And the rule with this, uh, the rule with consequential is that the damages have to be foreseeable. They can't be speculative. So let's go right here. I'll put it right here, foreseeable. These are foreseeable damages. This is the cost incurred trying to prevent the breach, you know, trying to hire someone new or order the product from another company. And your expectation is the profit. What did you what did you hope to gain, you know, from the contract? Then we have restitution. Restitution means the plaintiff recovers the value of the benefit conferred on the defendant. So again, if let's say they got, I don't know, 10,000. Let's just say you had a contract with somebody. Let's erase all of this. Let's say you had a contract with somebody where uh, they were going to buy you a lottery ticket. <laughs> I don't know if that's legal. You could have someone else buy a lottery ticket for you, but let's pretend that it is. And you have someone buy you buy a lottery ticket for you and you say, hey, I'll give you $5 to buy me a lottery ticket. And um, again, I don't think it's legal to buy a lottery ticket for someone else, but let's just assume it is. $5 for a $2 lottery ticket. So they seek to profit $3 and the ticket actually costs $2 for the ticket. And let's say that this person never delivers the ticket and it's a winner, it's a big winner and it wins $1 million. Well, they breached the, they breached the contract. So we're going to seek $1 million in restitution because you were unjustly enriched by breaking this contract and keeping the money for yourself. Right? So we're going to seek a million dollars in restitution. And then maybe we're also going to seek, we're going to seek our $5 back. Right? We're going to seek our expectation damages. Okay, contract remedies. These, so these what we just listed are our legal remedies and now we'll go on to equitable remedies. Um, oh, this is specific to that one. Oh. Gotta get a new dry erase board here soon. Okay, if you want, you can take a 15 minute break right now, pause it and then come let this sink in, quiz yourself a little. Now we're gonna get back into contracts. Okay, contract equitable remedies, specific performance in generally, generally granted for land or unique goods. Instead of getting money damages, the buyer will get what he contracted for. They must first show that there was one, Again, we're talking about specific performance here. They must show that one, there was a valid contract. We'll just do valid K. All conditions have been met and plaintiff has performed or is ready to perform under the contract. The legal remedy is inadequate. That's important. A legal remedy inadequate.
that it is feasible for a court to enter a decree for specific performance and the defendant does not have any defenses. Okay, personal property. Personal property is generally not unique, so jam damages are usually granted when personal property is at stake. However, specific performance is appropriate if the goods are one of a kind, rare, have sentimental value, or the circumstances otherwise make specific performance appropriate. So again, specific performance, there is a valid contract, all the conditions have been met, a legal remedy is inadequate because this is a rare thing, it's a sentimental one, it's a one of a kind, and they don't make anything else like it, and it's possible, so that's when specific performance will be granted. Real property is always considered a unique, so um, a unique thing of its kind, so specific performance is generally an appropriate remedy for a breach of a contract involving the sale of land. But a plaintiff may also recover damages, i.e. the difference between the market value of the land and the contract price. Okay, so you can always, if you have that question, what remedy is on property, and it's real property, it's always going to seek specific performance. Okay. Defenses. Are there any defenses available to the defendant? Special defenses, leads, and contract claims are unconscionability at the time the contract is made, statute of frauds, mistake, misrepresentation, impossibility, as well as waiver, lackeys, unclean hands, and hardship. What does that mean? It means that contractless breach you can seek defendant breach through contract, plaintiff is seeking uh, damages, but plaintiff, but the contract is uh, unconscionable or the contract violates the statute of frauds or there is a mistake or a misrepresentation of a material fact or impossibility, contract's impossible. Maybe the, maybe the car got totaled, the car can't, can't give it to you, it's impossible. Those are defenses to um, Uh, defenses to receiving um, remedial damages. Okay, rescission is right here. Rescission is the unmaking of a contract. Rescission is granted in mutual mistake cases, unilateral mistake cases, or misrepresentation cases. And reformation is revising a contract. Reformation occurs when two or more parties entered into an agreement that is reduced in writing. The writing contract does not match what the parties understood to be the agreement. This can occur because of a Scrivener's error or, or misrepresentation of the mistake. Bar exam tip. If you see reformation on a bar exam essay, note that the parole evidence rule does not apply. And then we have equitable defenses right here. Waiver, equitable estoppel, unclean hands, lackeys. Real quickly, a waiver is when a plaintiff voluntarily, oh, right here, waiver is when a plaintiff voluntarily relinquishes a right. Equitable estoppel, plaintiff said or did something to make the defendant believe a fact existed and the defendant relied on that fact and was prejudiced by it. Unclean hands, plaintiff acted in bad faith with respect to the same transaction and the defendant has been injured by the plaintiff's wrongful doing. 
and lackeys plaintiff unreasonably delays in pursuing a claim and prejudice to defendant results. So let's just go with lackeys delay. Maybe that'll help. Basically, you can you need to enter into the contract with bad faith. Equitable estoppel is you. <laughs> Basically, misstated a fact. They relied on it. It was reliance. And they were um, prejudiced by it. All right, that is the entire outline on remedies. So if you have made it through today, then you have made it through days three and four. Make sure to pause this video, go back and look at your outlines. Make sure you have each one of these things. When we're writing our essays, like I showed you in the video I just posted on trust, look at the example. This is how the... Uh, this is how the bar examiners want you to write these. Underline them, give your definition, then your analysis, and then your conclusion. Okay, so just going over that, we're, we're writing out a remedies, and let's say the question is, what remedies can A seek against B, and let's say it's a tort. Let's say it's a negligent tort. Well, we can say that A can seek compensatory. And we'll put the word compensatory, underline it, skip a paragraph, and then put your rule statement right here go straight into it, they have a, um, put the plaintiff in the position had the tort not occurred. And then uh, you can also say the had tort not occurred. Uh, that they have a duty to mitigate damages and um, must damages must be speculative. Skip a paragraph. Now we do our analysis. So right here we have our issue underlined. Skip a paragraph, put our rule statement, skip another space, then your analysis here, that is the word you want to start your analysis with here, B dot dot dot, A dot dot dot, skip a paragraph, well actually you don't have to skip a paragraph, but your conclusion statement is there or make sure you have that that trigger word therefore a can seek compensatory damages okay and uh this is a word in this Fake, this is a negligence. So would we get nominal damages? No, those are typically for intentional torts. Would we get punitive damages? No, those are never for negligences. Would we get restitutionary? Look at the facts of the case. If you can possibly put your title, restitutionary. Underline, space, rule statement of what restitution is. Space, analysis, here, uh, was the person unjustly enriched? Um, here, uh, B was um, unjustly enriched, received blah, 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 blah. Therefore, A may seek restitution. 
And that is how you get full points on your essays. Okay, so what is the hard part then? That seems pretty easy. What, what's the hard part of the bar exam? Well, we're on day three and four, and this is how many more words you have to memorize. So get to it, work on it. Subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.